Sacre du Printemps is the fundamental ballet of the 20th century, the ballet that changed the course of history. It premiered in 1913 in Paris with Diaghilev's Ballet Russe. It was a real shock to the public, it actually caused a riot in the theater. When it was performed at the Châtelet, people were, they were outraged because the music was so complicated and it was not melodic. They saw all these people stomping around on the stage and this chosen one, the sacrifice, jumping herself to death. As the work progressed, now we have audience members evidently getting up, screaming things. People stood up and um, attacked each other with hat pins and punched each other and there was just an extraordinary reaction to the primitive quality of the music and the dancing compared to what people expected of ballet. The women and the men all in the same unisex smock, brilliant colors, crashed together row after row with these ritual signs, and the women with long braids flying and whipping each other with their braids, the men bearded. They stormed the stage. They, they didn't want any more of it. It wasn't what they had expected to come and see the Ballet Russe perform. They came in expecting to see a ballet, a Russian ballet, in tutus, and then came the Sacre du Printemps. Nijinsky's choreography, his intention was not to shock. Nijinsky's idea was to go back to the roots of dance and to create the rite of spring, this celebration of the return of life. So when people started standing up and whistling and, 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 and clamoring and beating on the chairs, they were shocked. And the worst part was, of course, the dancers could not hear the music. After the performance itself, Diaghilev was the one who said, this is exactly what I wanted. In the essence of the piece, there is this return to some kind of primal consciousness. I think this really happens for dancers even now when they perform it. The story of the ballet, with just the scenario pictures of pagan Russia, just the stages of a rite, step by step, toward the goal of the rite, which was to make the sun return. In order to make the sun return, one of the maidens of the tribe had to dance herself to death. This is not a brutal slaughter. This is an act of sacrifice on the part of one person who's selected from the tribe. But it's actually what dancers do every day of their career, is they work to the end of their energy. And this is like a model of what it is to be a performer, especially a soloist. Usually ballets are challenging because of stamina and steps are hard, but this stamina is a solo where you're just jumping the whole time. And then the steps are are not what we're used to. We tell them every day, turn out, point your feet, refine, refine. And, and here we have a ballet which is turned in, flat-footed, <laughs> pounding the ground. When you see the company perform it, the conviction for the piece is so total in every single way. You've got 42 people on stage and everyone is committed to making the entire piece work. It's overwhelming. It's a powerhouse. It belongs to the Joffrey. Robert Joffrey's vision was always that he wanted to keep these works alive. This company was the company that spent all this time reconstructing this wonderful piece of work. You just can't help but be so stirred by it. It's not what people think ballet is. It's not tutus, it's not point shoes. It's a whole company committed to this sacrifice. And it, it's just stunningly beautiful.